What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and to another video. How good does that bumper look? I'm absolutely blown away at how well the bumper video has done. Thank you all so, so much for watching it and sharing it about. It appears quite a lot of you wanted to know how to do that one. So hopefully you're going to be as equally as interested in this next episode. In this one, I'm going to be looking at getting the electric windows out of the Turan working in the caddy. So I'm not quite sure how this one's going to play out really. Um, I've spoken to a few different people who, yeah, everyone's really secretive about it and won't tell anyone what to do, how to do, um, even more so than the seat conversion. So yeah, and trying to find information online, there isn't, again, there isn't a complete sort of, this is how to do it anywhere. So hopefully that's what I'm going to achieve with this video. Some people have said that this won't work at all, not a chance, won't work, you're an idiot for even trying. Some people have said, yeah, all you need to do is run a wire, possibly repin some of the connectors and it'll work. And then others saying that you need to add a power feed, which is given, I know I need to do that, possibly repin, and then also possibly code in as well. Which again, I can find no information anywhere on how to code them in. So I'm not really sure how this one's gonna go, but we shall give it a go and hopefully help you guys out along the way. So first thing I've done, we've got the Caddy and the Turan door card inserts, if you like, the uh, metal trays with all the window mechanism and everything on, laid on the floor, because obviously I had to remove the driver's side completely anyway, because we changed the door, and for some reason I just decided, let's just strip the passenger as well, which probably weren't the best idea. But anyway, it's off. So we've got the Caddy looms plugged into the Caddy ones, the Turan ones plugged into the Turan ones. My first thing I'm gonna do, is we'll rip everything apart and run the electric power feed that we need to run from the fuse board, which I'll talk about in a second. And then we're gonna throw the Turan door cards and everything into the van without the glass in, we'll leave the glass out for now. Chuck all of them in, plug everything in, put the battery on and see what happens, I think is the best way to start. So for the 12 volt power feed that you've got to get to the doors, it needs to come from the fuse board, which is next to the steering column. Um, you find an empty port, plug the end of the cable into there, or the specific cable I've bought anyway. Um, run a feed then, one to the driver's door, one to the passenger door, and plug it into the connector block that's on the A pillar already. You've got to remove it from the van to do all that, but we'll work out how to do that in a minute. So the cable I've bought is this factory looking one, which has got, I don't know whether it is factory or not, but it's got a nice little sticker on it that looks like factory. It's got the proper, that's for the fuse board. That one is for the driver's door because it's a short cable from the fuse board. That end is for the passenger door. And then these two cables here, you put from the plug in the door up to um, the control module that's in the door. That was, I think, about 25 quid off eBay. I'll put a link in the description to it. I'm not associated with it at all, um, but it works. It is well worth it because it's factory and you can still remove the doors if you ever need to. So first thing we need to do is move a few bits about, get the caddy in a position so we can get the doors open and get all the way around it with some half decent lighting. And then we'll take the interior out again. Yeah, should have done this in a different order, but anyway. So I suppose doing it this way shows you guys what you've got to do from a finished van. So let's get this moved and make a start. But first thing we need to do is start removing some bits of trim to be able to get the cable across. So what I'm thinking is we'll remove this lower trim here, this piece, possibly this piece, obviously we'll get the fuse board cover off as well. These trims here, and then hopefully that's good enough for us to be able to cable tie the wire up out of the way neatly. I really don't want to have to take this old dash out again. First thing to remove, which is super easy, is the bonnet catch. Now I explained this in the dash video, but I'll go for it again. So that's, obviously it sits in the car there, like that. If you look on that back edge, see this clip here? Put it this way so you can see. You get a screwdriver in there, pop that out like that, and that removes that clip. Obviously that clips around what's in the van, and that pulls off. Two second job. But if you don't know, you will struggle. So that's how you get it off. And I didn't learn that, found it on YouTube. Then you want a T20 Torx bit. So I'm going to do the screw. Now I've had a lot of, a few comments and a lot of messages asking about these. 
These are a Sealy 12 volt 3 8 cordless drive ratchet. Absolutely brilliant for the money. I think they're about 130, 140 quid. Yeah, well worth it. I mean, I'm not sure how it'd stand up to abuse every day in a sort of conventional workshop environment. But for what we're doing, it's absolutely brilliant. So I'll put a link in the description to this one and to the, the gun type because they are really good and well worth having. Speed everything up. Now, I'm not, it's not the perfect way of doing this. I've just sort of pulled this trim out of the way a bit. It's going to be a bit of a faff to get things in and out, but we've exposed and got this plug out. Now, to get this out of the A pillar, all it is is these two clips here. Pull them in together, and that will come out nice and easy. So then that comes out, and that makes that nice and easy. So I've got access now to work out where that pin wants to go. I'm going to just run around the other side, pull the other side apart to get this exposed as it is. Pull the trim out. And then we shall have a look at... Um, I we'll have to move this trim actually to get the fuse board out to be able to get to it. Um, but yeah, then we'll get the cable and start running the cable and get everything sorted. So I'll see you in a minute when we've got all of this ripped out and we're going to start chucking the cables in. Right, as you can see, I've got the lower dash off, I've got the head unit out, I've got the glove box out the other side. Just to give me a bit of access, I've got this loom plugged out, plugs pulled out the other side as well. But the first thing we want to do is run the wire, I'm going to run the wire to the fuse board. Once you've got the this lower dash piece removed, this is the fuse board here, that bolts just up there and you've got a, 20, a T20 Torx and a T20 Torx there. That drops down and on the back of it, you've got these little clips that you just pry open. Get in there with a the screwdriver now and we'll try and pry this fuse board open like that. that slides back off which then exposes the back of the fuse board so now this pin is the one that will take the fuse so we'll find an empty space in this and pop this in there to be able to pick that up so I've gone for pin number 31 so that just pushes in from the back easy as that what we'll do now is bolt this into place that is in there so now we need to pull that cable goes to this side we need to take the other one over to the other side so we need to find a route to take which shouldn't be too difficult so that's that cable ram now it's plugged into the fuse board we've got the cable this side long enough to go and plug into this plug it's going to go to this door the cable is ran up through the dash i'm happy with where it's ran it's not cable tied yet because i apparently haven't gotten i've used them all um, but it's not a problem the van isn't going on the road it's not driving anywhere so it's not going to snag anything but i am happy that the route it's taking when it's cable tied up it will be absolutely fine out of the way it won't snag on anything and we won't get any shorts what we need to do now is plug this cable into this socket so we'll pop these together and try and work so if we go for that top pin, yeah, so to be able to get the pin in, on this plug, you've got this purple connector here, which is up and clipped in. So you need to pull that down, and then inside here, there's this purple plastic here that you need to... pull up. So basically that goes down inside it and locks all the pins in place so they can't be pulled out. So you take that out, pop this in that clips in this sort of safety goes back in and there's that repinned so we're going to the top one so let's pop that back in to this opening and clip that back in so there's that one clipped in and then this pin now needs to go into the corresponding hole on this one which again has got the purple safety bit in it which on that one you just push up a little bit and that one is in. So now, in theory, if we plug that into there, we're going to have power into the door, which we've now got to get inside the van. It's going to be a lot of fun. Right, after a bit of a faff, we've got the cable through the rubbers. So it's plugged in in that end. It then goes through that rubber. It's just here. And I've got I ordered, but it's not turned up. Is some fabric loom tape to take this all back together through this one 
up here to the plug. Now the plug has only got one available large port at the top, so plug that into there, which I imagine sort of a safety thing on it again, which it has. Yeah. So you've got to take the plug to pieces, which is on in there. See that in there? There's a little little lever that pulls that to pieces, which has got those bits there, which obviously is to stop the power wires coming out. Undo that. Plug that power wire in. Plug that back together. That should should be power from the fuse board to this door. So we'll get this loom all back ran through the door, get it all put on and plugged in. Put the other side on, build the doors back up. See if it works. There's all those door internals sort of fitted and in place. Obviously I've not put the glass in yet, but we'll be able to tell whether it's working or not. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the door cards on so we can get all the switches and everything plugged in. So we know that it's gonna work. So what I've got to do, you have to modify the door card. So if you look here, this is the caddy door card and this is the Turan door card. You can see how much bigger that cutout is than that one. So we've got to put that cutout onto there. So we'll make a template, transfer it on. So I've done there, just rubbed a dirty finger on the edge. So you can see there, that's pretty much bang on with that cutout. We'll transfer that now onto that one. So that line, so that's what we've got to cut away. Just get it on. What we now need then is the door loom. So we'll plug it all into the back of the door card. Can't remember where it all goes. Then that grey plug just plugs into this control module. Put your door handle back in. That's that one on. We'll go and chuck the other side on. Then we'll put the battery back on. See if they work. I've come and sat down in the workshop because I've taken the loom out of the Turan, which has got the plug on that goes from the control module to the electric window switch, but it's all in one loom for some reason on the passenger side. So I'm going to take this loom, cut this loom to pieces, get all the tape off of it, trace the wires back, just take the wires out that I need, and then throw the rest away. You don't need to see this. See you when it's out. There we go, stripped out the bit that I want. So that bit can go in the bin. That plugs into the control module. That plugs into the window switch. So let's go and have a go. There's that door card then. I've trimmed the top of that the same as the other side. That's that wire for the window plugged in. Now, yeah, it's exposed there. I've ordered some fabric loom tape. We'll get it on when it turns up. This is only temporary to get pulled into the right place. Right, that's all the wiring and everything that we needed to have in. So, we'll connect the battery up, turn the ignition on, see if we've got any noise. Now, obviously I've not put the glass in yet, uh, but I just want to see if we've got any noise or anything yet. And I know that you have trouble with central locking sometimes. So I don't want the windows in in case something goes wrong and I need to get back in, so yeah. Let's connect the battery, give that a go. Right, battery's connected. In the ignition. Passenger side window's working. Driver side window's also working. Got lights illuminated on there as well, which is what we want. Now, let's see if the central locking works. That's locked it, but it's not locked it. So, we've got a problem with central locking, which I thought we might have. Now, I'm not sure, I'm gonna obviously try and sort it out, but what I've used is the, the caddy loom on the door. So, this loom here that comes from the A-pillar into the door 
is the caddy one with this extra wire that I bought in, which was what I was told or I've read to do. Now, I think that we need to repin something because these modules obviously are a bit different now. This is the loom from the Taran, and the reason I didn't use it is because it's got a different A pillar plug on. So what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to repin that plug and use the Taran door loom instead of the caddy one, which is not going to be easy because we've got to try and work out where everything goes. So I'm going to disconnect these two plugs, pull them through this way, see if we can work anything out. Right then guys, check this out. So, key in the ignition, passenger side, listen. That window goes up and down. Driver's side, up, down. So, key out the ignition, out the van. Lock the van. Doors locked, lights flashing as it should. Unlock, doors unlocked. In the van, you've got the button from the Taran on the door. Lock, unlock, and out we come. Oh yeah, we've got the electric windows and the switches and all the central locking working in the door. Now I was told by a few people it wasn't possible. It is. Now, I cannot take any of the credit for working out how to do that. I've just found it on the forum. So, let me explain to you what I've done. Obviously from the last time we did it, we just plugged everything in and then worked out something needed repinning. Now, it isn't where I thought it was, and it isn't changing the loom for the Taran loom that was needed. So let me show you what I did. So after many hours of searching online, reading through all sorts of different forums and things, the Caddy 2K forum is the one that came to the rescue. So on here, I went on and found, um, there's a thread by a guy called Neil278. You can see him. So thank you very much, Neil278, who has done a few different bits on it and fitted the Taran electric windows into it. Now, reading through the thread, it, again, they're all a bit broken because they've done things over a certain amount of time. But what I found was this one here, this reply, which was, you're listening. Move pin 11 to pin 12, move pin 13 to pin 16, pin 7 to pin 6, pin 15 to pin 7, pin 16 to pin 13, and then the red and yellow wire from position 12 now needs to go into 18. So the red and yellow wire was what threw me because the wiring on the caddy, on the caddy is white and numbered. I then read further down, it said door modules, blah, 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 and it said 5 ko 956793 for the driver's side. And I had a look, and that is the code that I've got. So then I started looking, and it said, uh, it said on the previous, I think it was somewhere on it, the previous one, I thought it was talking about the one that goes into the A-pillar. It wasn't, what it was talking about, it was talking about this block that goes here into this control module. So what we had to do, now I'll put a screenshot of the pin locations up for you guys. Now I'm not saying it will work on your van, but this is, um, these are 2009, 2010 Taran modules, and it's a 2011 van. So if you've got those two, this might work. So what you have to do is like we did to get this wire in, split this socket down, He says, easier than that. Right, split that down again to that, that part. So you split those two in half. And you're gonna need something really thin and small, but quite strong, or as I've got, pin removal tools. And what you've got to do is move the pin, the, the, pit, the wire in its location on here. So you've got to move pin 11 into pin 12. Now on this pin, on this casing, it's not got numbers all the way along. It's got number 
one on this end and nine on this end, so it runs one to nine. And on this side, you've got number 18 and number 10, so that runs the opposite direction. What it's also got on this van anyway, is the wiring itself has got 102, 103, 107. So the wiring number corresponds to the hole that it is in from factory on this plug. So I just went through that list that I've hopefully left on the bottom of the screen all the way through this, explaining what pin goes into what location and how you move it. So I did that, plugged that back in, and it all works. So yeah, mega happy that that works because I didn't really sleep much last night through thinking how I was going to get these working after plugging a bit of it all going wrong yesterday. So yeah, I am stoked that that's worked. Yeah, not as difficult as I expected it to be. So there we go guys, there are Taran electric windows fitted into the caddy and working as they should do. They go down automatically as well. They are a bit slow and they're even slower on going up because I've not quite got them sat right in the runners I don't think. I don't think the rubbers are back in the right place quite right. But we'll adjust them but they go up, they go down. The passenger one does exactly the same as well. All the doors lock as they should on the button and on the key as well. So I will call that a great success. We've still got to try and look into whether we think we can get the wing mirrors working on the controls as well. But that'll probably be in the wing mirror video, which will be in a few weeks. So yeah, I am so happy that we've got them working. As I said before, I'll put a link in the description to the wire for the 12 volt feed to either side. I don't think I mentioned it, but when you put it in the fuse board, it does say in the instructions or on the advert, 25 amp fuse, which is what I put in. Makes life so much easier just having those that you just plug into the terminals and you've not got to mess around. For 20, 25 quid, buy one. They're brilliant, they really do work. So hopefully that video has given you a bit of an idea as to what is involved in fitting Turan electric windows into your caddy van and getting them and the um, central locking to work at the same time. Again, it's not a step-by-step -step by any means and it isn't gonna work on every single van but it gives you a bit of a guide and a bit of an outline as to what's what. I read so many things online that said it needed coding, you'd got to do this, you've got to do that. I had somebody specifically say that these that I have bought, the motors, the wiring and all that out of the Turan will not work in that caddy. They do, they work absolutely fine. I didn't address this in the last video because they were already filmed and sat there ready to go out when this happened. So. I want to say a massive, massive thank you to every single one of you for subscribing to the channel. 20,000 subscribers. I only started this channel in May of last year as something to do during the UK lockdown. And yeah, we've made it to 20,000 subscribers and we're closing in on 1.5 million views as well, which is just, yeah, madness. Madness to consider where we came from and where we've got to in such a short space of time. If you've not already, do please consider clicking subscribe and press that little bell to get a notification of when we post a new video. Drop the videos a like and give us a comment as well because it all helps within YouTube's algorithm of helping us to grow the channel. The bigger the channel gets, the better the content will be and hopefully the more exotic the cars might get. So we'll leave this one there then guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, enjoy.